At the conclusion of the Second World War in Europe, you'll know that Germany was divided up into four occupation zones, along with Austria. Yet, when Japan was defeated and the Pacific theatre of the war came to an end, it wasn't divided into occupation zones. Instead, it came under the near-exclusive domain of the United States. But why? Why wasn't Japan divided into occupation zones? So, before getting to the why, you should know that the original plan was to in fact split Japan into four occupation zones, much like Germany. Although this time, there was to be no France. The north of Japan was to be occupied by the USSR, the south by the British, this area was to be occupied by the Republic of China, and the rest was to come under the control of the United States. As you'll know, this never came to be, and the primary driving force behind this was unsurprisingly the Americans, who nobody argued with because of their unique nuclear arsenal. So, as far as US forces were concerned, they'd done the bulk of the fighting against Japan and saw no reason why they should be forced to share their defeated enemy. Many in the US government felt that the rest of the Western allies, Britain, France and their colonies, colonies had done little to help and frankly weren't in the financial position to occupy much more than they already were. It also won't shock you to know that the occupation of Germany and Austria was already fairly tense, especially between Soviet and Western soldiers, and there was no desire to repeat that in Japan. Furthermore, Truman was a fundamental opponent of communism, and so he refused point blank to give any part of Japan beyond South Sakhalin to the USSR, since he was unsure if they would ever leave or whether or not they would start spreading communism there. He also flat out refused to deal with the French, since their role in the Pacific theatre was minimal, and Truman considered it a big enough favour that France would be allowed to take its colonies back. So, the Soviets were keen on having a part of Japan under their own occupation, because why wouldn't they? While Stalin was happy to regain South Sakhalin, he was annoyed that the USSR wouldn't be involved with the occupation, since he felt that even if Japan was disarmed, it would continue to be anti-communist, which, to be fair, it was. But the USSR was the only power that the US wouldn't budge on because of the new Cold War. As for the Republic of China, it wasn't particularly interested in occupying mainland Japan, since it would take money and resources which it couldn't spare, especially when considering the momentarily halted civil war. Chiang Kai-shek was mostly concerned with getting the island of Formosa back along with Manchuria, and he did get the first first one, so beyond that there was little more that he wanted. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that Britain was always happy to do a bit of occupying, was very keen to be given a piece of Japan for itself, although most of the actual occupying was to be done by Australian and Indian troops. Which is why, when the Americans did occupy the islands, Britain was given some areas of control and was placed in charge of overseeing Japanese disarmament. Now, America's original suspicions would end up being correct, and Britain would quickly leave Japan because it was expensive and they were broke. And thus, until 1952, Japan was under the sole occupation of the United States, with the rest of the world having little to no say at all. I hope you enjoyed this episode and a special thanks to my patrons. James Bizanet, The Pastry Section, Danny Maloney, Marvin Cassell, Kelly Moneymaker, Rob Waterhouse, John Bizquez, Mo, James Castaneda, Aaron the Whites, Jordan Longley, Marcus Arsner, Gustav Swan, Jerry Lambdin, John Bailey, Colin Castleman, Rashid Ali, Spinning Three Plates, Fielder Oink Oink, Maggie Patskowski, David Silverman, Izzy, Lexi Schwinn, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle, Spencer Lightfoot and Winston Kaywood.